stock manipulation, accounting fraud, the biggest con in corporate history. These are the allegations by Hindenburg Research, a short seller and forensic finance researcher. Short sellers find companies they think are overvalued and make their profits by betting the stock price will fall. It was a big bet against India's richest man and it paid off. Gautam Adani's companies saw their share prices tumble and the man himself had at least $50 billion slashed off his personal wealth. Hindenburg's report also set off a firestorm in Indian parliament. Sir, sir, are you going to shut him up, sir? Sir, are you going to shut him up, sir? This was the issue on which parliament was paralyzed in what is described as the budget session. For most of the session, there was no work because the government was not willing to concede the demand of opposition parties for a joint parliamentary committee. On top of that, the leader of the Indian National Congress, the largest opposition party in India, Rahul Gandhi's speech was censored 18 times. India's market regulator, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, or SEBI, has been asked to investigate. But one of India's most prominent lawyers, arguing against Adani in a number of cases, says the independent regulator isn't acting very independent. So the Securities and Exchange Board of India has been sleeping over it and uh, obviously deliberately sleeping over it. And there are conflicts of interest as are clear from the former uh, chairman of uh, SEBI, Mr. UK Sinha, now joining Adani's Hindi TV uh, television company, which Adani has taken over. While SEBI is investigating the allegations against Adani, it is also investigating Hindenburg research for short selling violations. A furious Adani published an over 400 page rebuttal accusing Hindenburg of attacking India itself, its institutions and its ambitions. But accusations of illegality have been floating around the billionaire since at least 2004. Several sets of allegations relating to the functioning of the Adani group are in the public domain. The Securities and Exchange Board of India uh, has been investigating and was alerted to by not just by media organizations, by a member of parliament to the Securities and Exchange Board of India. So these allegations and the investigations that have been going on in a somewhat erratic, intermittent, and I would even argue half-hearted manner. Back in 2007, SEBI blocked the group's promoters from buying and selling securities for two years for their role in an alleged stock rigging scheme. Where, how did Hindenburg investigate this? Hindenburg's investigations are also based largely on what had already been published. So all this, uh, in some way or the other, was in the public domain. Hindenburg has only put it together. The Adani Group conglomerate has companies in significant sectors of the Indian economy. Mining, energy, infrastructure, media, to name a few. So what do the Adani company's fundamentals look like outside of India? The group was materially overvalued on fundamental grounds. Now, ultimately, the Adani Group listed entities were seen to be winning dramatically favourable contracts on a consistent basis for most of the last decade from the Government of India and state-owned enterprises and the stock market repeatedly priced in that enormous opportunity for contracts that hadn't actually been won as yet. It's called blue sky valuation so there was a huge divorcing of reality from the fundamentals of the group. One of the red flags that the regulator should have been drawing um, focus on was the fact that there was very little stock market coverage of the various listed Adani subsidiaries. So stockbroking analysts normally on companies as big as the various Adani group entities, they would have had 10 or 20 different analysts covering them. But in fact, there was only published research by maybe one or two houses. That's a real red flag to the regulator. But that begs the question. If these allegations have been out for years already without affecting Adani Group stock prices, 
Then what changed with the Hindenburg report? The accusations have been around for decades, that is correct, but they've never been accumulated in the level of detail by one financial institution who's effectively then short sold all of the debt that Adani had been borrowing in the US markets and then also said an open challenge to Adani, feel free to come and sue us, we'd love you to, because by the way, we get discovery and as soon as we get discovery, our, our accusations will be proven to be true. And the fact that it's been done in the home of capitalism in Wall Street, it means it's not going to be resolved by Indian rules, it's going to be resolved in an American court. An expert Supreme Court panel investigating Hindenburg's claims said it can't return a finding on a number of them, like the ownership of foreign shell companies or regulatory failure. It said the investigation has hit a wall. Another committee in the top court last year issued similar findings about claims the Indian government had used Israeli Pegasus software against journalists and dissidents. It said the government refused to cooperate. The market regulator's investigation around Hindenburg's report continues. The Adani group did not respond to the ABC's request for comment.